Welcome to the Cherry Picker After Dark, the Patreon exclusive to our horror movie podcast, where we like to kill people, but not really. And because we have a system, you know who I am, but, you know, you got a quote, don't you? I killed Liz. I killed the teen dream. Deal with it. <laughs> what? Because it's at the point in the movie where they play it back, <laughs> and she just won prom queen. Eddie of Edward is Truth. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait to bury the lead. Jawbreaker! Released... Uh, yeah! <laughs> well, everyone knows, anyway. Uh, August 1st, yeah, right? 1999. Mm-hmm. And this is... This is one of our favorite non-horror movies although although it there's an argument to be made that it could fall in the the genre i've actually i i just bought the uh 20th anniversary blu-ray because i've only ever owned this on dvd mm-hmm. uh and i right. put it in my collection because this is like all horror movies behind me except i have wild things in there and now jawbreaker because i feel like those are right. genre movies we're gonna do wild things eventually for uh for a future episode, <laughs> I, I'm sure. Nice. But uh, but yeah, I was I was listening to the commentary for uh, for the movie. Like the, the that's the only special feature or the new special feature on this uh, Blu-ray, which is quite upsetting. I feel okay. like there could have been w- way more. Um, and uh, it was uh, Darren Stein, the the writer. Did he direct it as well? Yes, he did. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh, Judy Greer, Rebecca Gayhart, and Julie Benz all together. But he he was he said at one oh. point that I know it was not, like they even commented they're like, I wish we got Rose, but I guess she was in mm. New York at the time because this was like back in nineteen or nineteen uh, two thousand and nineteen <laughs> that they <laughs> recorded. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, he he mentioned at one point that um, it's this movie is like really big in the horror community and he loves it for that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 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 I, and it, he also made a, at one point commented that like originally he thought this movie was for the three G's, the, the gays, the goths and the, and the girls. Um, but was yeah. surprised to find that there's like <laughs> a, a much wider audience than that. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm not, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not surprised to hear, I mean, when you offered it for us to do it, like, I didn't think, but that's not horror. I mean, it's got death all over it mm-hmm. and the descent into madness. It's got the three Ds, death, descent into madness, and dames. And, so. and decay. <laughs> <laughs> and decay. And demented. Seriously, yeah. the color's called demented. Yeah. And, like, uh, and quotable lines. Well, I think, yeah, because the they, like, they honestly, said something about, like, it's a, it's a line called decay or something, and it's, like, became so popular because of the movie that now they have a... Uh, a color called Courtney or something <laughs> just to, oh, to honor it. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> I yeah. also love, okay, uh, like, okay, there's so much to cover, but I just love the fact that since we're talking about Decay and Demented, mm-hmm. I love the fact that, like, if you look at the nail color on both of them, there's nothing kind of, like, chic or slick or what, you know, what you would probably usually perceive, um, I guess, I, I, a line with, like, a popular girl kind of, like, structure uh at the particularly in like 1999 like because they're so like kind of like rotted and dark and i love the fact that this movie doesn't really kind of take the safe route design wise um it does it's designed incredibly intentionally with the costumes and with the just all aspects of the production design Mm -hmm. but i love the fact that there's somebody somebody was uh i saw in a lot of promotional material that is on youtube for it they kept trying to push it as like clueless meets heathers which i took issue with because i thought clueless i mean i think jawbreaker's as fashionable as clueless is but in a different way clueless was very much kind of of its time like very chic beverly hills of the 90s and it's all over that movie and then also just kind of like basic timeless all-american girl when they weren't all decked out but this one is so vintage. I feel like everything they wear is from any kind of like time bracket. They borrow from anywhere between like the fifties to arguably like the early seventies. I would go back even where the characters like even further than that. Like there's like some like twenties oh, really? stuff in there. Like the 
what that wire thing she has in her hair at the prom <laughs> like that's uh <laughs> <laughs> oh that's actually that I, and that well, was i mean that sure. was rose's idea i think like she's just like i, I want it to be as like crazy as possible it's just like put this shit in my hair um but there's <laughs> but i i know what you mean because like there's if you were to give this movie just like just to screen it as you say for someone for the first time and there's just kind of like this is a 90s movie and if they had never seen a 90s movie before anything in the 90s and that would be like <laughs> is this what the 90s looked like like no yeah. not, nothing in this is 90s at all because you've got like it's just it's everyone's like fashion style is all over the place like even like the characters themselves because mm-hmm. at one point like um courtney she's kind of dressed up like Greece, like she's got the 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 purple capris and like the scarf, oh. <laughs> like and uh-huh. and yeah. Julie Benz is and this she actually like commented this on the the commentary that like she was just going for like little like miniature like poodle or like some sort of dog like with her hair and just, <laughs> just like, constantly in like these different. I mean, styles. the one thing. <laughs> The one thing that stands out, I think, probably for many of the times that we've indicated so far is, I think, the crimped hair that she has at the prom. At the prom. Uh, Foxy <laughs> does. Yeah, because uh, that's one choice. I'm just kind of like, okay, I think they're trying to make it look like she's on the way out. It's the trashiest she's looked the whole movie <laughs> and the most disorganized. She's also got that horrible kind of like threadbare uh, 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 feather boa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, oh, wow. You I could, mean, yeah, she should be crouched under a table. You could actually, end. like, you could track the like the character development or like character regression yeah. through the wardrobe and hairstyles. Cause like, you know, and especially with, uh, with Fern Violet, um, totally. it's just like her, her outfits get like more and more risque up until like the very uh-huh. last, mo- like before she's discovered when she pulls up to the school and <laughs> the posters are everywhere. I don't even know how yes. Courtney got them all the way up on the building, but that aside well, she, Mar- marcy did it marcy did it <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> and you see marcy with like a ladder and courtney just being like come on get those posters up school starting exactly soon. <laughs> exactly <laughs> but but i mean, she, and I know, but I mean julie julie yeah. um or J- judy greer um she gets out of the car there and she's literally got like yes it, it, like just a bra on it seems and just like a blouse like an open yeah. blouse and it's just like you know you you go from like the midriff uh exposed to just like that full on and it's almost mm-hmm. like she was at the peak of her her like violet and then it's just like now yes. it's all coming down you know she flew too close to the sun and <laughs> the, <laughs> the wings but melted. also like the and the colors are also at their most vivid there because, like, she's got this, I mean, and the pinks ought, remain vivid for her, like, mm-hmm. throughout. But the, it's interesting because the hair, the, the hair's the platinum blonde and the, and the lips are just, like, you know, <clears throat> like, exploding from her face with the pink lipstick. The red, the red of the car is just, you know, like, bursting through the screen and everything like that. And I just kind of feel like um, watching how she got there because when we first see her she's got the horrible wig on you know the <laughs> with the bangs yeah. and, and um she's like she, carrie she's essentially carrie when yeah the movie starts but like in a comical way like she's like she, like they like they know the movie Every, knows yeah she's supposed to, she's carrie this, like in the, quotes everything this movie is steeped in irony like there's there's nothing yes. to be taken serious with anything here like nothing everything was done intentionally and like <laughs> like to be camp i mean it's almost like the opposite of what we usually say because like we say like camp comes from passion like not mm. like intention yeah. and like there's definitely passion here but it's like everything is intentional like they they wanted to be as uh-huh. twisted and fucked up as possible 